it's hard to start this subject because it fills me with an inconceivable rage. Um, I have a series as well uh, that I'm going to be restarting soon. Um, I'm conflicted though. Let me know in the comments whether or not you want this series to be on the new channel, uh, Hate with Harding, or whether or not you want it to continue on this one. Uh, but the series is Pedos in Power. And it's a series where I went over a whole lot of powerful pedophiles, either cops, politicians, etc. And I have just a laundry list, partially thanks to my primary source uh, for today's video. And it's a subject that has consistently filled me with disgust and rage, you know, but not just because um, it's about pedophilia, child abuse, sick motherfuckers, but because it really highlights where a certain group of people's priorities are. So, let me just start off this video by diving right into the subject material, and I'll, I'll get to a point eventually, but I just want to impress upon y'all a series of uncomfortable facts that I think highlight the point I'm trying to make in a very specific way. So, uh, start your engines, because thanks to the Free Thought Project, we have four cases that I want to look at today. The first case, cop gets 25 years after his own department busted him for running a horrifying child porn ring. Quote, I am someone who should have been acting to arrest and stop child abuse and child pornography. End quote. The article uh, proceeds to say that in Lake Mary, Florida, in March 2022, the Daytona Beach Police Department's Advanced Technology and Cyber Crime Unit launched an investigation after receiving a tip about a child porn distribution ring that was being run on a social media app. Now, for those of you who know uh, Twitter's bullshit, basically, they have been a consistent problem for child porn. And I ran a relatively successful survey not too long ago where I tried to get Twitter to ban pedophiles from their app, um, or at the very least make it easier to report them, and at the very least put 18 as the age threshold if they aren't going to ban pedophiles, because pedophiles shouldn't be around ch children like, <laughs> shocker, I know, what a, what a shocker of a statement to make. But Twitter has not quite done that, and Twitter, Facebook sometimes, there's a ton of platforms that just have rampant abuse problems in this regard. But uh, I digress. Uh, <laughs> after doing some digging, Daytona cops made a disturbing discovery. Their perpetrator distributing images of child sexual abuse on the app was one of their own. Now, just, you know, I hate it when commentators, like, regularly interrupt the flow of the actual information they're discussing, so I'll try to do this minimally. But uh, also something to check out is the video I did, hashtag CIA abuses kids, about the CIA covering up their own uh, child porn problem. Um, and also uh, definitely check out the rest of the videos I've done on the DHS and various other powerful organizations covering up child porn problems. It's not just this. In April 2022, Officer Brandon Fox, 23, was arrested and charged with seven counts of possession and distribution of child pornography. According to police, they received information regarding an individual sharing child pornography via a social media app that included images and videos of acts involving children under 10. Mmm. Just enough to make me a little nauseous there. The evidence was so strong against him 
that it, he was quickly found guilty. And this week, Fox was sentenced to 25 years in prison, followed by 45 years of probation. Not even life in jail for spreading under 10 kitty porn. Blue privilege. Blue lives matter. Um, but basically, Fox reluctantly entered no contest pleas for a staggering 38 counts of possession of sexual performance by a child, with each count being escalated from a third degree felony to a second degree felony due to Fox's possession of 10 or more images, including at least one video. The legal system actually aimed to hold him accountable. The consequences for a second-degree felony can be as severe as 15 years in prison, meaning that Fox faced the possibility of an astounding 570-year sentence. However, the sentencing guidelines uh, established a minimum sentence for Fox of 63.5 years, demonstrating the intent to ensure justice is served. During the sentencing, Fox admitted to, quote, being a part of the problem instead of the solution when it came to stopping child porn. This guy. Officer Friendly over here. I am someone who should have been acting to arrest and stop child abuse and child pornography. In my tenure in law enforcement, I was involved in the arrest of sex offenders and people who have sought to hurt children. So when I came into contact with these items, I should have been part of the solution, not part of the problem. No shit, Fox. Instead of protecting those innocent children from criminal behavior and exploitation, you chose to repeatedly participate in their exploitation and their victimization, Circuit Judge Elizabeth Blackburn said. And every single time you open a photograph or video, you, a sworn officer, re-victimize that child. Every time you enter that chat room through Kick or any other chat room that's designed to share child pornography, you have participated in exploiting children. During the investigation, police tracked the horrifying images and videos back to Fox. According to police, Fox had been with the department for two years before he began preying on children. Two years. As we reported, right before Fox's arrest in August of 2020, former New Mexico State Police Officer Ricky Romero was granted a plea deal after admitting to soliciting and receiving sexually explicit images from an underage girl on social media. Instead of jail time for this child predator, Romero's badge granted him blue privilege, and he was given probation. Thanks to his blue privilege, uh, Romero avoided jail and didn't have to register as a sex offender. While on probation for sex crimes against children, Romero was arrested again. According to United States Attorney's Office for the District of New Mexico, Romero appeared in federal court the following month, where he was charged with coercion and enticement of a minor and receiving child pornography again. So this, this article even includes a little tidbit about somebody who didn't get justice, right? But then there's more cases, like the cop who got 14 years for responding to child rape case by raping the child himself. A cop with a history of misconduct was never fired and eventually assigned to a case involving a child victim who he sexually assaulted. This was in Nolens. As frequent readers of the Free Thought Project know, police officers are arrested weekly in this country for sex crimes involving children. This is a massive problem, but becomes even worse when victims of child sex abuse seek out help and run right into the arms of someone even worse than who they are trying to report. For a girl in New Orleans, Louisiana, this is exactly what happened to her. In 2020, the New Orleans Police Department arrested one of its own officers for sexually assaulting a 14-year-old child, Rodney Fickner. 55 was arrested and charged with sexual bad battery and decent behavior with a juvenile and malfeasance for sexually assaulting the child while investigating a sexual assault that she reported. Stumbling over my words here a little, because it's got me enraged. Got that nice little rage buzz going. After fighting the case for two years and pleading not guilty, last, Bickner changed his tune. 
Vickner family admitted to grooming and raping the girl while taking her to the hospital to have a rape kit done for a previous sexual assault she had just endured. On Tuesday, he was sentenced in federal court to 14 years in prison. Notice, 14 years for raping a kid, 14 years for grooming a kid, 14 years for abusing his badge because blue privilege. Quote, we are grateful to this young survivor for coming forward, even though she thought no one would believe her. Because, you know, when you're snitching on a cop, basically the system's probably not going to believe you, said Assistant Attorney General Kirsten Clark of the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division. Had she not been willing to do so, we would have not been able to hold the defendant accountable for his heinous crime. This case should send a strong message to law enforcement officers who sexually abuse victims, particularly children, that they are not above the law and will be held accountable. The public must be able to trust that law enforcement will faithfully execute their sworn duties or face the consequences of failing to do so, said U.S. Attorney Dwayne A. Evans for the Eastern District of Louisiana. Our office, along with the Department of Justice, the FBI, and state and local law enforcement agencies will continue to investigate and prosecute any violations of constitutional rights. As we reported at the time, this officer had a history of discipline problems and he should have never had his job while the child sexual assault took place. According to a scathing report from WDSU, Vickner was disciplined four times in just six years, raising the question of whether or not he should have remained employed by the NOPT. Below are the infractions. He received a five-day suspension in 2010 for acting unprofessionally and keeping inaccurate records. NOPD's internal investigation found he used police resources to look up a woman's personal information and then failed to record an unnecessary stop of the woman in his activity log. He used fucking cop resources to stalk and harass a chick. And he was still on the job. FUCKING DECADE! Vicknair received a one-day suspension and driver training in 2015 for violating policies related to a vehicle pursuit on March 28, 2014. The internal investigation found he drove a 76 mile per hour on Claiborne Avenue at 7 p.m. before driving against traffic for more than three blocks! The investigation did not determine whether Vicknair disregarded a supervisor's order to end the chase. He received a three-day suspension in August 2015 for violating policies related to another vehicle pursuit on February 6, 2014. The internal investigation found he drove against traffic during a car chase that a supervisor determined should not have happened. Vicknair received a letter of reprimand in August 2016 for acting unprofessionally when responding to the scene of a fatal overdose. The deceased man's mother complained that Vicknair laughed at the scene. NOPD's review of body camera footage showed he told the overdose victim's girlfriend, I didn't put the needle in his arm, and I bet if you checked your name you would have warrants. The war on drugs is a racket. It's it's actually just a crime. And and if we ended the war on drugs, so many fewer of those sorts of cases would even be possible because people would have safe injection capability. And, you know, simple shit like that. <laughs> you know? According to WDSU, each time NOPED punished Vicknair, the superintendent warned in a letter to him that a similar infraction in the future could result in more severe disciplinary action. But this never happened, and his latest punishment before he raped a 14-year-old girl was a letter of reprimand. Because the department lacked oversight, Vicknair was never demoted or had his job threatened, which led him to sexually assaulting a child on duty. In 2020, the victim contacted the NOPD to report a sexual assault, and Vicknair was assigned to her case. Instead of helping the child, however, this monster began grooming her. According to Nola, Vicknair allegedly began sending text messages to the girl, going to her house during his personal time, 
and remarking how attractive she was and how she aroused him, said the source, who spoke on the condition of anonymity. After receiving an anonymous tip that Vic Nair was sexually assaulting the child, who he was supposed to be helping, the NOPD Public Integrity Bureau conducted a preliminary investigation and found enough evidence to arrest him. Now he's finally being held accountable. By the way, the hero of this story is Matt Agarist. He uh, writes good articles. Follow the Free Thought Project. Do it now. Memphis Police Chief deliberately covered up sex, child crimes in her department report. C.J. Davis allegedly told detectives not to investigate the husband of a colleague after images of him with underage girls was found. Memphis Police Chief Sarolyn C.J. Davis, whose officers brutally beat Tyree Davis to death, had been previously fired by the Atlanta Police Department for deliberately botching a sex crimes probe, according to local news outlet the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Tyree Davis case is where a bunch of cops just went up and beat the fuck out of Tyree Davis until he died. Basically. They beat the fuck out of him like Rodney King, Kelly Thomas style. Good old-fashioned pig-ass beatdown. That's what they did to him. And if they had been properly held accountable because there wasn't a blue wall of silence... You know, a thin blue line. They would have been stopped before they could do that and cover it up. Um, and by the way, the Tyree thing was a massive cover-up. too. Like, you just can't get away from cover-ups. You know? <laughs> Fucking cops. Um... But the article goes on to say that Davis was demoted from major to lieutenant and then fired in 08 after a city investigation found her at fault for taking no action on the case of a police sergeant's husband, who ultimately pleaded guilty to a federal charge of producing child porn. Two detectives claimed Davis had ordered them to not investigate Terrell Marion Crane after police found sexually explicit images of him with underage girls. His wife, Sergeant Tanya Crane, resigned before the department could discipline her. Davis's department is in the national spotlight after the fatal beating of unarmed black motorist Tyree Nichols during a traffic stop led to the firing of the five officers involved. It recently emerged that two of those officers were hired after the department dramatically lowered its hiring standards by loosening education and experience requirements as it faced a critical manpower shortage. There aren't enough cops! Get the kid diddlers and corrupt ass low IQ pieces of shit. Government action in action. Tadarius Bean and Demetrius Haley joined the Memphis PD in August 2020, by which time the force was no longer requiring even an associate's degree, with five years work experience considered an acceptable substitute. The two men were fired and charged with second-degree murder on Thursday, along with three colleagues after body cam footage of the brutal beating was released to the public. Oh, and by the way, definitely don't look into deputy gangs and find out that there are whole-ass cop gangs with their own signs, insignias, that sort of thing. Just an aside. The de police department has since reduced its requirements even further, dropping a physical fitness test, mandating just 24 college credit hours, and even offering waivers to applicants with felony convictions, generally considered a disqualifier for any government employment, let alone law enforcement. Ooh. So, you can be a fat, dumb piece of shit who's already a felon. Despite further sweetening the deal in 2021 with 15,000 signing and 10,000 relocation bonus, the force was short 500 officers as of last year, local NBC affiliate WMC-TV reported. And then, last, but certainly not fucking least, get ready to have uh, nausea, because Top Cop gets 100 years for feeding semen to Weiss students, raping kids, and filming it. Quote, no one has to worry about Dennis Perkins hurting anyone ever again. 
Look at this guy. Look at this guy. You know? And then look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And then look at this. Over here. Look at... Oh, these are just such officer-friendly types. You know? Who could not love somebody who looked like this? Look at how... He looks like the Fallout guy. He looks like the Fallout guy. Or like 800 fucking YouTubers who all have that same haircut. Um, <laughs> look at these people. These are the faces of evil in this regard. And then just to finish it off with Senator Q-Ball over here. Uh, Livingston, Louisiana, as TFTP reported in 2019... A high-level Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office deputy who commanded the SWAT team and his wife were indicted on more than 150 felonies for unspeakable crimes against children and animals. Dennis Perkins and his wife Cynthia Perkins were accused of multiple counts of child rape and the production of child pornography, among other disturbing charges, including secretly feeding Dennis Perkins semen to children who were students of Cynthia Perkins. On Tuesday... This vile, disgraced cop took a plea deal, and although he didn't admit to all 150 charges, he pleaded guilty to enough of them that he will be going to jail for the rest of his life. Finally, we got a life sentence! It'll probably be reduced later. He pleaded guilty to enough of them that he will be going to jail for the rest of his life. Perkins was sentenced to 100 years in prison after pleading guilty to one count of second-degree rape, two counts of sexual battery of a child, one count of video voyeurism, two counts of production of child porn of children under the age of 13, and one count of the mingling of harmful substances, that being the jizz he fed kids. Cynthia took a plea deal in 2022 and received a 41-year sentence after agreeing to testify against her husband, because as anyone who has watched the Innocence Project Joe Rogan episodes, basically, uh, plea deals substitute real evidence, but... He pled guilty anyway. You know, there was a lot of evidence. I'm not going to take that this was just a plea deal for something that didn't happen. So, with all that being motherfucking said, the case that dragged on for years has finally come to an end, and the victims will be spared the horrific experience of reliving the events in the courtroom. Isn't that fun? You get to relive your trauma in order to expose the people who fucked you, and you might not even win the case. <laughs> or they might settle, or take a plea deal, or something, and just get fucking bitched out because they're cops. Quote, not just for the victims, but for the jurors who had to watch it, it would have been very disturbing, prosecutors said after the sentencing. That's why we're so happy that we were able to achieve what we did today without having to go through that. No one has to worry about Dennis Perkins hurting anyone ever again, one prosecutor added. The victims were consulted and were all okay with this. As TFTP reported at the time, Perkins had a history of sexual abuse dating back years, but his position as a SWAT commander allowed him to avoid accountability. Court documents describe incidents in which Dennis Perkins used his position as a cop to film up the skirts and down the shirts of women he would pull over. More women harassment pulling over. It also details over five terabytes of encrypted data containing videos of horrifying acts with children, including Cynthia holding down a small child while Dennis raped her. What's more, according to the court filings, Dennis Perkins should have never been hired to be a cop because he admitted to heinous crimes before getting the job. As Wav reported, court filings include a job application from 1998 to the Baton Rouge Police Department where Dennis allegedly admitted to several crimes including prostitution, sex with a minor, and drug use. He admitted to it in the 90s, and they still had him here. The BRPD hiring board at the time voted unanimously not to hire Dennis. He was a reserve deputy with the LPSO when he applied for that job. Them deputies again. However, he would later go on to be hired to a full-time position and rise up through the ranks of the LPSO where he would eventually command the entire SWAT division. He admitted to it in the 90s and he was still allowed his job. 
As TFTP reported in October 2019, the Perkins were arrested after a months-long criminal probe headed up by the Louisiana Attorney General's office. Then in December, a grand jury indicted Dennis Perkins on 78 felonies and his wife Cynthia Perkins on 72 felonies involving sex acts against children under the age of 13. Quote, two non-consenting adults, various unsuspecting victims by means of ingesting harmful substances and an animal, according to the court filings. The indictment also includes 61 counts of producing child pornography. Also, according to the advocate, Perkins was accused and subsequently admitted to ejaculating on various pastries and into bottles of energy drinks that were then ingested by Cynthia's students. Perkins was a lieutenant with the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office Special Operations Unit before being terminated the week of October 21, 2019. He was hired in 2002 from the Walker Police Department. This child rapist commanded an entire SWAT division and was considered a hero by the community. After his arrest, his wife Cynthia Perkins resigned from her teaching position at Westside Junior High School in Walker. The investigation found so much disturbing evidence against the Perkins that this top cop and his wife were facing a sentence of more than 6,000 years in prison. The investigation started after the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children received a tip that the couple was raping children, filming it, and then distributing it to their network. The evidence in the case was reportedly so overwhelming that Dennis Perkins' original attorney requested to be removed from the case. Even more disturbing is the fact that Dennis Perkins was caught in bed by his former wife, not Cynthia, with a child in 2013. However, due to state and federal laws that largely limit law enforcement from acting on allegations of grooming, nothing ever happened to Perkins. Instead, the child was sent to counseling and this hero remained a cop! A counselor also told the state police that he believed Perkins had done this before and would do it again. Adding to this incredibly corrupt circus is the fact that in February 2020, another former cop, Melanie Barnett Curtin, 41, of Denham Springs, was arrested as she returned from a cruise in Nolens. Curtin worked for the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office starting in 2011, the same department as Perkins. Her ex-husband is also a former LPSO deputy. Curtin was arrested on two charges, first-degree rape and video voyeurism in connection to crimes committed with the Perkins. It's a sad day when police officers, the ones who claim to protect us, are caught preying on society's most vulnerable. However, there are a lot of sad days in America as the situation plays out like a broken record over and over again. Luckily, this time, justice was served. Now, let me just say, if you haven't heard of the Perkins, if you haven't heard of Sarah Lynn Davis, if you haven't heard of Vicknair, if you haven't heard of Brandon Fox, or any of the other names mentioned in the same articles, but you have heard of some trans person or other minority grooming because they talk about a thing to a child. Or because you follow the libs of TikTok account or gaze against groomers or a variety of these other accounts on Twitter, but you don't follow the Free Thought Project. If you spread stuff claiming to protect children, but you're not following the cases of the people in authority positions who rape them, who feed them cum, who film child pornography, sometimes with animals, who cover things up for their fucking colleagues, who hide behind the thin blue line of silence to harass women and to upskirt and downshirt them, to, you know, use department resources to target women and follow their cars, to, you know, repeatedly admit to and be involved in fucking minors and still be hired as a full-time police officer, and to grooming somebody because they were involved in an investigation where they also got molested as a child, if you're not tracking these cases as much or more than you're tracking anything involving trans people, fuck you, 
you don't actually care about kids. Because if you did, then the primary target of your investigations would be stopping people like Jeffrey Epstein, the epicenters, the Epstein centers of this sort of vile act. You would be there, Johnny on the spot, protesting cops. You would become anarchist because you wouldn't be supporting these systems that are shielding these people, that are allowing them to abuse their power so that they can fuck kids, film it, and get away with it. You wouldn't be supporting the system and then saying that the only real problem is them liberals and Democrats. And, just as a nice little cherry on top, because, you know, I have to be consistent and even, you also don't get away with it if you support Matt Walsh. And the fact that he says 16-year-olds uh, are adults and you should be able to impregnate 16-year-old girls as long as you're married to them. There is a problem with a lot of people abusing child abuse for their own personal fucking purposes, and it's loathsome to me. If you didn't know about these names, it is now your obligation to share this video and to like and subscribe. If you didn't know about these, it's now incumbent upon you to follow people like the Free Thought Project who actually give a shit and who will talk about crimes against children that you didn't hear about. If you actually give a shit, and you're one of these anarchist accounts or libertarian accounts who's talking about trans people and hasn't even mentioned this, this wasn't even on your radar, know that you're a hypocrite, you're damaging every part of the movement, and ultimately, you're helping the people who are currently using children as fodder for their trans eradication rhetoric. Literal fascist rhetoric from people like Michael Knowles, boosted by people like Matt Walsh, on the same network as Ben Shapiro, whose genius idea is that if parents can't afford school lunch, CPS should take them. Because the fucking government is awesome with children, apparently! Everybody gets to pretend that they give a shit about pedophilia when it comes to saying, you know, Epstein didn't kill himself. Everybody gets to pretend that going against Epstein and saying release the flight logs or some shit like the dumb virtue signal it is, is somehow a replacement for stopping the, neps, the next Epstein. Matt Walsh said the Catholic Church doesn't have a pedophilia problem, it has a gay priest problem. The Vatican just raised its age of consent to 18 several years ago, because before, very recently, the Vatican City's age of consent was 12. I'm pretty sure that age of consent wasn't created by homosexuals, fucking Matt. I am sick of it. And if you're sick of it too, feel free to share this video. Feel free to get your friends watching it. Feel free to start actually protesting the system because God fucking damn does it suck to hear a bunch of people pretend to be rebels and then reify the system, spread its propaganda, be its bigoted little bully, bootlicking fucking jackboots, and sycophantically belly up to the trough every single time there's a liberal or lefty or commie that the state can be used against. Or in this case, just calling literally anyone you don't like a groomer. Even asking about this situation, even asking about the whole, the whole trans thing, for the past uh, 24 hours basically has gotten me a cavalcade of hate from various people. And I've been called a pedophile more than once for even asking for like, hey, can you prove that there's a large number of children who's had their genitals mutilated? 
Spoiler alert, people fucking can't. Can't! I mean, there are a few examples, sure. And sure, we can protest that. But you know fucking what? The vast majority of child abuse happens either in the purview of the state or because of people who are paid by the state. Public schools are huge for abuse. Cops are huge for abuse. Bus drivers are huge for abuse. But we don't hear about the public school system where this chick was feeding students cum. Cop cum. We don't hear about that because people are too busy waxing bullshit ass on their bigoted garbage. And pardon me if that sucks ass! Pardon me if that's not the way it should be! So, with all this being said, I think that it's just yet more fodder, more fuel in your cannon to oppose these bigoted bullies and smash the fucking stick.